All right, we are at Sitgo. Now this place, when I first started riding, was called a Otto's, O-T-T-O apostrophe S, Otto's Food Mart. And the guys who own this now, out of everywhere I've ever been, are the nicest, uh, nicest people I ever met. It used to see Otto's up there and you can buy live bait around the corner, minnows and worms. You can buy cane poles in there and fishing tackle. And the KCS yard is right there. Let, let me zoom in on it. See that tower, that light? That's from the yard. That's the south end of the KCS yard. Uh, I missed that rain. I didn't get hit, but I got me a OJ jug and taped it up real good. Those are really strong for carrying water in. And oh yeah, I went and splurged. That really does help with my pain. But they got boudin balls, boudin link sausage, good good southern food I I went in and grabbed the catfish got a couple of loads or pieces of bread and the catfish is under that big catfish strip so I'm gonna eat here and I'm gonna walk down to the yard here in a little bit but the people here that run this place that own it or the absolute coolest uh, as far as travelers. Let's see if my old tag's still on the dumpster. It's been about three, two and a half, three years since I've been here. Yeah, it looks like it's been painted. Yeah, it used to be brown. That's right. Anyway, yeah, and there, that used to be an AM radio station, that tower. It was an AM Christian radio station. And just around the corner is a little brick building where they sat inside and did their radio show. Yeah, they got the best food in there too. That's that catfish and they throw in as much bread as you want. Yeah, he's shoving a cut back in the yard now. This really isn't a prime spot I'm at, but I'll start here. I just don't want to walk down that Lakeshore Road. There's no shoulder. You can't really see. You know, they used to have a, a control point box right here. I don't know what, what they did with it. But there's the south end of the yard. That's the south end of the yard. That's a, had to move up to the tracks. Now, main one and two are on the far left. And I don't know if you can see the yard tower from here. Nah, unless they took the yard tower out. But you go toward Dallas, Hevener, Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, and Kansas City that way. And going south. Now, Keto Lake, that's Interstate 220 bypass. 
that overpass, you can see part of the lake. Now trains going this way from my point out of the yard south, they go about three miles and there's a big split. They go straight down to Leesville, Louisiana. And from Leesville, there's a split. You go to Lake Charles, there's 111 rail miles to Lake Charles from Leesville. Or you go to Beaumont, Houston, Laredo. Most grain goes down to Laredo into Mexico for export. Or, let me turn back around. Yeah, that three miles up split where I uh, mentioned going straight, where you can go left too, and that crosses the river. Uh, then you got your trains going to Monroe, Vicksburg, Jackson, Pearl, Meridian, Birmingham, and Atlanta. Or you can split at the river again and go down to La Tenure, Alexandria, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans. So that's the directions you can go out of here, like five different directions. Yeah, again, that's a uh, Otto's Food Mart we were just at. That's a bad, dangerous road. I had to walk all the way up to that light and cross and come back. Yeah, there's that new, I think that's the box that was right here. They moved it down there a ways. Because it was right here. Last time I was here and all the times before since 89. Yeah, there's a, a guy up here at this metal fabricating shop. Not that building, but the next one. Pretty cool. He'll let you do some work if you knock on that back door. As long as you have respect and treat him right. Uh, anyway, that's the south area of the KCS Yard and Shreveport here. One more thing I forgot to mention. About four or five miles north of the yard is the town of Blanchard, Louisiana. And there's a junction called Texas Y. You go left towards Dallas or you go straight to Texarkana, Ashdown, Rick Mountain, uh, Mena, up to Kansas City. That's a really beautiful ride through the Washita Mountains. There he's coming back with a cut. That sun's starting to come out now. Yeah, they're in and out, back and forth, all day right at this spot. It kind of makes it difficult. If your train comes in on a track on the other side over there, you really can't get to it. And if you're on the other side waiting and one stops on this side, well, then you're, you're up creek without it. Well, here's KCS Yard Office. This Lake Shore Drive. Most dangerous highway I've ever walked on. And they pull up southbound to crew change. They do it right there on the main line. This truck up here pulled over, he tooted his horn. It may be a rail worker. Probably, uh, I hope, waiting on me. Yeah, I still got to go up a half mile. I'm just taking my time. You know, carrying that bucket. You're constantly squinching like that, holding 20, 25 pounds. And you get what's called muscle failure, where you just lose all the strength. Yeah, I gotta take a break every 500 foot. 
But this is almost mid yard here. All the employee parking. There's a shop, a car shop, on the other side, right about in that area. And that's out on that Blanchard Shreveport Highway. Kind of over where Low Mart is, L O M A R T. Anyway, I'll rest a little and keep pushing. Well, heck, I get about 20 yards from where I'm going. And uh, I hear whoop whoop behind me, and I turn around, and it, it's the police. And when he pulled up and got out, he asked, Did I have any camera equipment rolling? So I knew then he knew who I was, but gave me a trespass ticket. Uh, he says, Sue String, it's an honor to finally meet you. But I can't have you riding the train. So he gave me a ticket for trespassing. Which is alright. He was he was really cool. He said he caught a guy and a girl this morning. Just west of here. Had to get him off the train. So I don't know where he's out of. But I got to walk about another mile now. Alright. There's some... Hobo tells, but won't be using them in the good weather. I got to get up here on top of the. That's a UP tracks up there. But there's an access road. I can go around the corner here, walk up a flight of stairs. And get there. There's a siding up there. I'm gonna go wait on UP up there. Whew, I made it up here. Yeah, this is UP, Union Pacific. This heading through Marshall. After that bull, that railroad cop gave me that ticket, I didn't want to take any chances because usually if you get caught the second time get caught again after getting a warning or ticket you'll go to jail so I caught a ride to Marshall Texas and there's a sighting I usually don't tell many people about this sighting but if you're a train rider you'll likely know where I'm talking about I'm not gonna give away the spot but they pull over each direction now that's going Shreveport and then Monroe or it goes down to Livonia to New Orleans through Alexandria Union Pacific it crosses the Red River in Shreveport and this about a mile up there's a split a mile up you go to the right to Texarkana and Little Rock and Chicago St. Louis or you stay straight and you go on to Longview and Longview, there's a split down to Houston or to Dallas. But I'm just going to try my luck with UP. Every time I'm in Marshall, I come to this spot. I don't have to wait long for something to pull in there and stop. I can't barely make out the my old tag in white. Some of them I put a date on, but no, that one's not got a date. See, I can tell how long each paint marker lasts. That's about three years old, so I'm going to have to redo it in black. All right, I made it to the little gravel yard. They load and unload gravel cars here now that split is up there by that overpass you go to the right to Texas, Kenna, Little Rock, Poplar Bluff, St. Louis, Chicago or you uh, stay straight and then left uh, Longview, Dallas, Houston Yes. 
siding. And there's a couple of little gas stations and stuff nearby. But I, I got a rest. Yeah, that railroad bull that gave me the ticket. Ah, I can't stop thinking about that. That's why I come to Marshall better safe than sorry. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of trains stop here on the UP line. Um, so, I will wait here and hope I catch something during the day. It's about 5 o'clock afternoon right now. But if you see the sky, it cleared off real nice. And it's supposed to be sunny the next three days at least. You can see the trees starting to bud here too. It's about that time anyway. All right, I'm gonna go get a big blue cream soda. Oh yeah, one other thing. If it gets dark on me, I'm gonna go over here to this little building and I've camped there before. And just camp along the side of it. It's real quiet over there. There's some old sidetracked cars. Probably bad orders. They just only place they had to put them. But that'll be home if it gets dark on me. And then if something comes, I may get on it anyway and uh, go wherever. Yeah, I found a big red and a big blue uh, and some off-brand cream soda. I figured it's been about a week, so. See, look at all this garbage back here. This is a home bomb camp. That's what gives train riders a bad name. Just your local home bums been back here that's what left that trail I just walked up see and then when people see me with a backpack or any other train rider they we get the blame for it but there's still some train riders like that that'll leave their garbage everywhere but not as many as a local local town homeless do uh, let's see what the name of this is see it's my all time favorite big red it's a Texas drink I think they're made in San Antonio or came out in San Antonio I know Dr. Pepper did Dr. Pepper then when I go through Waco I always pass by that Dr. Pepper plant. Yeah, here's that off brand. It's only 50 cents. Oh, it's Big K. I see that now. You get a cheap cream soda, they really taste nasty. Kind of bitter. It's like they make it out of cream, alright. Cream of soap. Cream of detergent. Come on, Uncle Pete. That's what we call Union Pacific. UP, Uncle Pete. But anyway, that wind's clearing out the humidity and the dew point's going down, so I'm not sweating as bad. It's probably 70, 72 degrees right now. Uh, got a little bit of a better spot. Yeah, one of the most memorable events I had here in Marshall, this was like five years ago, maybe four, uh, me and a traveling friend and his dog were up here by uh, Kroger. And it had been raining and raining and raining all day off and on, and finally it was just steady solid heavy rain most fronts that move through the the line of showers passes this way 
skinny but these were just one after the other in one row they call that training uh, and they already on uh, saturated ground it it was just not soaking in and there's a creek between this spot and that Kroger so I knew that creek was getting really high and I said man we better make a break for it we don't want to get stuck here at Kroger all night and uh, so by the time we got to that creek that water is about like maybe about four or five inches from the surface of that bridge sticks and twigs and everything are all washing up stacking up against the bridge and we finally got to a used car lot that had a canopy and awning over the cars and this was like after five so no one was there so we camped there until that rain stopped early the next morning but I'm glad we went when we did because that water was over the bridge about five foot like an hour after we passed over it. I wish I'd had some pictures of that. But, uh, and another, it's kind of a bad thing. Me and that same friend, this was a little, little longer ago. We were camped out right over here and I was drinking myself to death I mean just one beer after the other my all my waking hour and I got so sick that my fingers and my toes and my belly were swelling up and so I, I went to the hospital to get checked out although I knew what it was and I remember they admitted me for five days here they just Oh, we had to nurse me back to health and I had a pancreatitis but for the first three or four days they wouldn't let me eat anything I, I couldn't even drink I, all I could have was ice chips uh, yeah, cause that pancreatitis was, was painful but they had me hooked up to some pain meds I don't know what they were morphine or dilated I'm not sure what it was, but five days later I got discharged and uh, still happy to be alive. I mean, my fingers were seriously like a third larger than they are, and the tops of my feet were all swollen up. Good Lord, that was bad, and my belly was all stripped out, and they actually took a needle and under the belly button to let that liquid out called paracentesis I had that CITES C-I-T-E-S uh, I've had it a couple of times and two of those times I ended up in a nursing home for about four months each time and I, I do I think about how I used to drink every day and I keep focusing on that every time I think how nice it would be to have a beer I remember instantly and that's why even now they call it a dry alcoholic a dry alcoholic an alcoholic that once they quit drinking they crave sugar I mean so much sugar in fact that it's almost as bad as the alcohol and I'm, I'm still learning with that I mean although I don't hardly drink no sugar compared to the way I was a year or two ago. I've got it down to like, oh, maybe one soft drink average every 10 days. I uh, had a couple at my dad's and then I had one in Chicago before I went and seen my dad. And before that, it was like two or three weeks I didn't have any. And then today I bought that big red, big blue, and the bad one, the big doo doo. A 50 cent one but yeah hadn't been nothing but a set of UP engines go by I've never seen that before he could have been doing a, a unit transfer out of Texarkana bring them down to the Y 
and then back them in to take them to the Hollywood yard in Shreveport. He wasn't pulling any cars. So that's likely what he was doing with them engines. Yeah, I got a new sticker. Uh, da -da, da -da. Yeah, there is likely home for tonight, or over there to the left of that, under that awning. It's just a little workshop. I'm just going to go around the back after everybody gets off work. Yeah, with big trees like this and the tight wind we're having right now, it's always a good idea to continually be on the lookout for, you know, rent branches and limbs coming down. It probably hadn't had this kind of wind since last year. And those leaves just budding out up there, that just adds to the pull and the stress on the tree. Catches more wind. So if any deterioration has happened, like along the joints where it comes out and turns again, those joints, they become weaker. So just be on the audio lookout where you can hear <laughs> crack timber. But I mean, can you imagine? Look at that big limb there. Can you, can you imagine that hitting you in the head? That's why I'm waiting over here. That wind just got bad in the last 30, 45 minutes. Dang. There's some smaller ones there. Oh, you still got some good sized limbs that could come down. If that thing fell on you and didn't kill you, it'd be laying on you. You couldn't get it off. <laughs> Probably about a 40 mile an hour gust every now and then, about every two or three minutes. Get a big gust. There's that box on the left past the bridge that I was at earlier. Yeah, it's so windy, I can't hold the. Like I may be sleeping over there. I'm not fixing to go over there and check it out. All right, I moved. See that tree in the center? Right there. That's that tree I was underneath. Walk down. Uh, there's a lot of plant growth up around that building now. But, since I can't tell if there's a camera or not, it's like a shack, an office shack for this concrete plant. Now those lumber cars, they had railroad ties on them, brand new railroad ties, so they've been doing some track work somewhere. They're almost rusted to death uh, yeah see see all the railroad ties and if you look on the end of the railroad ties see them metal plates let me try to zoom in some more those silver metal plates on each end of the railroad tie that's to keep them from splitting as they weather, they want to expand out and split. Well, that kind of holds hold everything together on the end. I'll show one up close if I ever get one. 
one ugly duckling lone hopper they put the concrete powder stuff in in these you can tell he ain't going nowhere in a while weeds grown up it is just windy sun almost set Now, it used to be a big uh, grain elevator here, but they tore it down, I believe. Me and a friend went in it before that. Well, I think it's, yeah, it's still standing, but uh, I thought it had been uh, on the mark to uh, tear down. But it's got a big fence up around it now. Heck. That would have been nice had uh, they put that fence around it. Yeah, that wind. My beard blowing up in my face, in my eyes. Yeah, I'm trying to stay out of the wind behind this hopper car here. This just goes down and dead end. Yeah, I've seen a couple of shopping buggies up in the woods. Uh, there's little home bum camps all over the place. Yeah, look look at my beard now. It's all yeah, okay. like Bozo the clown with a beard. So yeah, I could sleep up here if I had to. That's where you ride on the bringer. It depends on the weather and I, I don't it, I think rain is gone for the next three or four days all right this may be it come on baby stop made it I made a grainer it's kind of a uh, crappy one but uh, it's not a Cadillac but it's night right now so oh we stopped see that's why I come here to they stop to let the Texarkana train go by sometimes anyway, I thought the guy would never stop <sighs> anyway, load it up, we're ready. Can't see much, so that big tanker behind is fully loaded. La 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 la. At least you can't see my finger in the way now. Well, we 
we stopped outside Longview. That's that fully loaded tank car behind me. I wish the tree frogs were out like they were a few places so far. But I got a grainer with a little bit of a lip. Anyway, it's windy too, man. Yeah, we're just outside Longview waiting in the siding. Here comes the train. stopped again happens every time right dead center and on a cross crossover luckily there ain't no cars here yeah we're we're about 50 miles east of Dallas right now 
kind of a slow ride, but that's all right. We must have a lot of hazmat stuff on here because we hadn't cracked 40 miles an hour since we left.
went past the AEI detector get close to the yard. called a uh, cheese grater. We call this cheese grater. It's got grip prongs on it so you don't slip. Man, that'll eat, your, eat through your pants if you scoot on your butt on it. Or I guess you could grate cheese. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Dallas. Come on, baby, stop.
Trinity River over there. Somewhere. Cadillac. Trinity River. That's the flood wall over on that track too. I think he's gonna stop. Come on. 
taking his time doing it. It's got black in it now. Well, I hear it. Hear a train. Now I got to put everything away. Oh well, I I just got off. There goes my train. Man, that was a booger getting down them bands. Oh, now to go somewhere and. Find some Wi-Fi, I guess. Get a cup of coffee. 